Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez and welcome to the SOLIDWORKS API Project Tracker Series Video 12. Now in this video we're going to start to get into Excel. For the most part, the, the stuff that I wanted to cover in the video was interacting with SOLIDWORKS, getting to know, getting into custom properties and the file path, and then also some of the VBA stuff, the user form, how to interact with those values that we got in SOLIDWORKS, and how to interact with the user and change things such as the color of the text boxes and so on. The Excel side of things is not really a big part of this. There are several different ways that you can access other programs and there's a lot of information out there on it. There is a Microsoft Developer Networks website, MSDN, and that has tons of information, tons of how-tos, tons of stuff on different ways to access programs. So a lot of what you see in this video is going to be copy-paste. I'm not really gonna talk about how to do things as much. So just be aware that the video series here isn't aimed at giving you all of the VBA basics. It's just a look at the overall project, how we approach it, how we work with some of these variables, and how we get everything done. So I'm gonna start by going back to my main module. So if I go into the modules, I have MLC Project Tracker 1, and inside here, the only thing I have right now is submain, and it's user form one dot show and VB mode list. What I wanna do is start at the top and type option explicit, just like I did in my other programs. And then we need to have some statements that allow us to interact with Excel. Now the important thing here to note is that SOLIDWORKS 2013 and SOLIDWORKS 2014 now come with VBA 7. Now VBA 7 has some new functionality in it and it's set up to run 64-bit systems. Now if you're working with VBA 6, which was part of 2012, or if you're working with 32-bit versions of Excel or other programs that you're trying to open, it's very important that you study and you learn the functionality of the, the calls PTR safe. There's also a long PTR, and these are two different things that you're really gonna need to get a hold of and you're, need, you're gonna need to learn because they help convert your code to go between 64 and 32-bit systems. Without this information, it gets pretty tricky and you could have things crash and it's not a good way to try to run things. As I said, that's not really part of this video series. It's more of an advanced topic, so a lot of what you see is just gonna be copy and paste. I'm gonna give you a little bit of information and just show you how things look, but in, for the most part, you're probably gonna to wanna to copy this code or spend some time learning this information. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start with if VBA7. VBA7 is what we're running inside of SOLIDWORKS 2013 or 2014. Uh, I'm currently working on 2014, but even if you guys are in 2013, you'll still have the same functionality. We're gonna declare PTR safe, and that was that new keyword that was added into VBA7 function. Now in the past when you would declare these functions that PTR safe wouldn't be there. If you try to use it in VBA 6 then it's going to throw up an error. It's not going to work. So post message lib user32 alias post message a and then we make some declarations in here. By val hwnd as long PTR by val w msg as long by val w param as long ptr by val l param as long ptr as long all right, so all that information, as I said, it's really in there to handle the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit systems. There's a lot more that goes along with this. Uh, we're going to have to have an else statement. Declare function, post message. Now, as I said, all this information is coming from the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit systems. I'm also going to want to come back here and change the caps here user32 alias then we're going to start our declarations in here by val hwnd as long by val wmsg as long by val w 
param as long bival al param as long as long. All right, so as we're looking at this line of code, this information is here, as I said, to determine the difference between 32-bit and 64-bit. Now you'll notice that we have a pop-up error here. The code in this project must be updated for use on 64-bit systems. Please review and update the declare statements and then mark them with the PTR safe attribute. Now it is red, but that's because it's in the else section. So the first part says if VBA7, then do this. And you'll notice that we have PTR safe. We redeclared some of these variables as long PTR. Not all of them, but some of them. Now it's giving us this warning, it's giving us this compile error because this isn't what it wants to see for a 64 bit system. But again, it's okay because that is within our statement here. We can say okay, and we're gonna leave this as is. Then we need to add the end if portion. All right, once we have end if, one last thing we need to do is this constant. And this is going to equal and h12. All right, so now that we've taken care of all this information, where do we go next? What do we have to do from here? Well, we need to declare some more things. Now, when we're dealing with SOLIDWORKS API, we're dealing with activating and integrating within the interfaces, the things that we have access to in SOLIDWORKS, we make our declarations such as SW app as sldworks.sldworks, SW model is our active document, it's part of model doc two and so on. Now we need to deal with Excel and uh, Excel is another application we need to make some declarations. So we're gonna do public my Excel app as Excel, and this is Excel dot application. Now you'll notice that nothing came up. When I started typing Excel, Excel didn't actually pop up in here, right? Well, the reason that Excel didn't pop up in here is because we need to go into our tools and our references section. Now the reason we need to go into tools and references is because we're dealing with SOLIDWORKS API, we're dealing with VBA that's opened up in SOLIDWORKS, we have access to SOLIDWORKS references in here. We don't have access to Excel. So we need to go through here and we actually need to activate or get access to Microsoft Excel. So you'll need to come through here, you'll need to search for any of the available references that you need to use in your particular program. If you're gaining access to, for instance, Microsoft Access, if you're dealing with database information, then you're gonna to need to come in here and you're gonna to need to find the, uh, the information and the references that you need. For me, I need access to Microsoft Excel 14 object libraries. Once I hit okay, let's go ahead and start typing this again. My Excel app as Excel, so now you can see Excel is in there. I can hit tab dot application. So now as I make that declaration, because I now have access to tools, references, and Excel 14.0 objects, I can now use that information. If you try to run that without selecting those references, things are not gonna work. You're not gonna be able to control things in Excel. The next portion we need to do is make another declaration. This is gonna be my WB, which is workbook as excel.workbook. So as you can see, it's very similar to the integration into SOLIDWORKS API. We need access to the application that is SOLIDWORKS and we need access to the active document. We need access to things like the custom properties interface and so on. These are the exact same things that we're doing with Excel. Public my sheet as excel.sheets or uh, in this case, we're gonna do excel.worksheet. So that way we have these declarations, they're in the main module and they're available for the rest of the program. And now we have access to Excel application, Excel workbook and Excel worksheet. Now we can control things like switching between sheets. We can actually go through and control cells and use formulas and do different functionality that otherwise we wouldn't have access to. Now that we've made these declarations, we need to make some sort of procedure that can open and close Excel. So within the main module, I'm just gonna start a new public sub. It's gonna be public sub, and it's gonna be close Excel app. 
Now, this Close Excel app is going to be a call. I'm going to call this specific sub anytime I need to close the Excel app. This prevents me from having to put this code within a bunch of different sections, a bunch of different subroutines, uh, sub procedures, whatever the case is. This way I only have to do it once and I can call the public sub Close Excel app. So what we're going to do is my wb dot close and we're going to make that true and the true section of this is to save changes this way you don't have to say my workbook dot save or you don't have to manually force a save condition using my wb dot close and then hitting the space key and saving changes set to true it will automatically save the file next thing we need to do is post message now this information is part of the code within Windows uh, and within Microsoft Office. This doesn't necessarily deal with what we're what we're dealing with here. It's not true to form in terms of opening and closing and accessing sheets and so on. Uh, but these messages have to deal with problems that may or may not arise. So we're going to do the WM and we made this constant declaration at the top. WM quit and in this case comma and it says by val w param as long in this case it's zero then by val l param as long ptr zero next thing we need to do is set my sheet now my sheet was declared as excel dot worksheet my sheet equal to nothing then we need to set my wb my workbook equal to nothing and we need to set my excel app equal to nothing so this will effectively go through close Excel and save it and it'll go through and set all the the sheet the workbook and the Excel app to nothing so this has created a sub that we can call to close Excel whenever we need it now let's go into the code for user form one inside user form one we're gonna need to create a new private sub that allows us to open Excel so very similar to closing Excel we're gonna need to create this new sub so that we can call it whenever we need to open a workbook so next we're gonna do private sub it's gonna be called open WB as soon as we hit enter you'll notice that it puts that end sub in there for us so now we need to set my Excel app equal to create object and we're creating an object that is Excel dot application now if you do a search online for VBA and opening programs and controlling programs you're gonna find all this information it's gonna be very easy for you to get access to how to open and close Excel uh, but it's very important that you look more into the PTR safe the information dealing with 64-bit and 32-bit because even if you're running a 64-bit system you're running 64-bit for SolidWorks obviously then it's not out of the realm of possibility that you have a 32-bit version of Office loaded on your machine. And if you go to open 32-bit Office dealing with 64-bit VBA code, things are going to get bad, things are going to get ugly. So again, very important that you look into that and you make sure you understand that and how to use it or at least grab the code that you can use in order to control that so that you don't run into any problems. The next thing we need to do is set my WB, my workbook, equal to my excel app dot workbooks dot open and the workbook we're gonna open is called workbook path name and this is something that we're gonna declare we haven't declared it yet but we're gonna have to set a constant equal to this workbook path name the next thing we need to do is set my sheet and this is gonna be equal to my workbook dot sheets and my workbook dot sheets is going to be in my case sheet one then we do my sheet dot select so what we're doing now is we're creating the object excel application then we are opening one that we're going to determine here in a second then we are going to be selecting or setting the sheet to sheet one and then we're going to be selecting that so that way that gives us access to the sheet and then once we're writing our code we can interact with the cells and we can work with those cells so that is the code to open and close Excel 
but we have one more thing that we need to do. So up at the top, when we're actually defining our value, we need to define a constant. And this constant is going to be that workbook path name, and this is going to be as a string. Now this string is going to be equal to wherever you need to save this workbook. In my case, I want to go ahead and navigate to where I, where I have my workbook saved and go ahead and grab that information. Now for me, I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste it in. And my uh, specific workbook is called test workbook and it's going to be dot xlsx and then we need to end those quotations. So now this constant workbook path name that has been defined up here can now be called and used whenever we're opening Excel. All right, so now we've created an open workbook sub and a closed workbook sub that we can access whenever we need to open and close the workbooks. That means that throughout our code, wherever we need to open Excel and save information and close Excel, we can use these separate subs that we've created. I know this video was kind of long and drawn out and it wasn't real descriptive, but unfortunately, as I mentioned, it's just kind of a complicated problem and it's not really easy to go over at the level of stuff that we're talking about. There's a lot of information online, as I mentioned, at the Microsoft Developers Network. There's a lot of information that you, that can be found online everywhere. And obviously it's a, it's a big topic because SOLIDWORKS 2013, 2014 runs VBA 7 and it's supporting 64-bit code. And if you're trying to, as I mentioned, open 32-bit version of Microsoft Office, or if you're dealing with 32-bit version of anything, the descriptors, things inside the code itself don't work, such as declaring a long, it needs to be a long PTR, and you need that PTR safe command in order to help convert things back and forth. That way you don't need specific 32 or 64-bit code. It's a good place to end this video. You can probably do without this video as long as you have the specific code, which is written here, the, the open. If we go back to the main module, we have the closed here, and then all the different declarations I made at the top. If you just recreate that when you're trying to work through this project, then everything should work fine. We'll find out in the next couple of videos if we have any issues that we need to deal with or work through. But as of now, it's a good place to end the video. If you guys have any questions about this, please email SolidWorks support at mlc-cad.com and we'll see you next time.